So we're here today in the hallowed grounds at Ferrari's home in Maranello, specifically at the Fiorano test track in Maranello, to talk to you about the perils of marriage. Well, the perils of being married to me anyway. You see, the first time I was at Maranello, I was standing outside the track on the other side of a chain link fence, watching a Ferrari FXX go past at crazy speeds on the Fiorano test track. Now the FXX is a hyper version of the Ferrari Enzo. So a hypercar of a hypercar, as it were. Now perils of marriage, because I was here on that occasion on my honeymoon. Well, in case you're wondering, I'm still married, so maybe not so perilous afterwards. But really, what we're here at Fiorano to talk about is speed and the 488 Pista specifically, because Pista stands for racetrack and that's why we're at Fiorano. At the front, the Pista gets a carbon fiber bonnet and bumper. You get the option of a set of carbon fiber rims. The level of detail is such that there's a special coating on the inside of the rims that was originally developed for the aerospace industry. In this case, it's there to help dissipate the heat generated during braking. At the rear, there's a carbon fiber spoiler as well as a carbon fiber bumper and diffuser. The defining feature of the Pista is its rather conspicuous S duct in the front of the car. This is a Formula 1 derived Ferrari patented technology that's being used on a road car for the first time. Essentially, there's a small front wing that creates a low pressure area at the front of the car. This accelerates the air into a duct that then directs it to the top of the bonnet and over the front of the car, generating additional front downforce with no penalty in terms of drag. Of course, all this wizardry will cost you. 4.91 crores to be exact when the 488 Pista is launched in India in November this year. So the Pista is the latest in a long line of very special V8 Ferraris. The 360 Challenge Stradale, the 430 Scuderia, the 458 Speziale and now the 488 Pista. Now 488 is fast enough but this one has 50 more horsepower 10 more Nm of torque, it does 0 to 100 in 2.85 seconds versus a fairly mediocre 3 seconds for the 488 GTB. So why am I standing here talking to you? Let's get in and drive this baby. So we are starting off in the hills around Maranello and it is an absolutely beautiful day. Right, some of the numbers first. 3.9 liters twin turbo V8 that produces 711 brake horsepower, 770 Nm of torque, 0 to 100 in 2.9, 2.85 seconds. 0 to 200 in 7.6 seconds. That is unbelievable. And you can feel it every time you so much as touch the accelerator pedal. The second thing that strikes you when you get into a hypercar like this is the absolute immediacy of all the responses. You tap the accelerator pedal and it lunges forward. You touch the brakes and it absolutely comes to an immediate stop. Now the brake booster is from the Ferrari 488 GTE, which is the uh, World Endurance Championship racer. Um, so this car has taken a lot of inspiration from the 488 GTE, which is actually the World Endurance Champion at the moment. The engine is just unbelievable. Uh, the engine is turbocharged, but you wouldn't know it other than a little bit of a whoosh from the turbo. The response is absolutely instant. The response is absolutely immediate. The revs build to a crescendo. Uh, there's linear response and it's completely immediate. I mean, it is phenomenal and completely addictive. The speed is instant and instantly addictive. 
heroin has absolutely nothing on this car. The steering is nicely weighted, it's sharp, it's immediate, but it's not too sharp. You don't turn in and then have to second guess yourself because you've turned in um, and the car is darting into a corner. It's very progressive, it's very well balanced. So the standard exhaust manifold in the 488 GTB, I mean I say standard, but uh, the exhaust manifold in the 488 GTB uh, is cast iron. This one is Inconel pipes and it's got beautiful welding. Very, very race car like. Uh, not only is it lighter and it leads to the 18 kilograms of weight savings that they get from the engine alone. By the way, this car is 90 kilos, 90 kilos lighter uh, than the standard GTB. So the Inconel not only leads to performance gains, weight loss, but it also leads to phenomenal sound. Manotino out here, uh, which at the moment is set to sport, I don't have the heart to set this thing to even race or CT off uh, on the road. We'll save that for the track later on. It's got these massive paddles on the steering uh, column here, and I much prefer them on the steering column rather than on the steering wheel itself, because you always know where they are. Um, the only irritating bit is, uh, and we've said this before, uh, is it's got these uh, the, the indicators, uh, indicator buttons on the steering wheel itself. So when you've turned around or when you're making a U-turn, for instance, you kind of have to guess which is which. Um, it's nice not to have the stalks behind the steering wheel, of course, uh, but it's kind of confusing to have them on the steering wheel. So what about this cabin? It is extremely driver focused as you would imagine. The seats are really firm, they hold you in place. The four point harness, even more so. I'm sitting here staring at a massive yellow analog DAC right in the center, uh, which is also addictive because you just want to send the needle going northwards all the time. Absolutely everything is driver focused um, to give you the best lap time on a racetrack. And to that extent, obviously the ride is very, very firm. Um, you feel absolutely every pebble, every undulation, everything on the road. And if it's absolute performance that you're after, uh, then you have come to the right place. You have certainly come to the right place. Right, so that's it for the road. Let's hope the weather holds because we're heading to the racetrack next. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. It is absolutely coming down. It is coming down. Let's get those wipers doing some work. I guess we stay off the curbs. Ooh, it's slippery. We're in sport still, not in wet. Just sliding, that's for sure. Whoa. And almost aquaplaning too. Yep, it is coming down now. It's so hard to hold yourself back when there is so much power to play with. Aquaplaning there as well. Yep, just too wet. It is just a little too wet now. It is very, very, very slippery, folks. What I can tell you is that this is one tremendous, tremendous machine. It is just so incisive. It is so fast. It is so responsive. It's really, really something else. The fact is that it is incredibly fast and incredibly usable as well. Let's try this again.
The sun is out. The track is dried up for the most part. We're looking good. So the internals of this engine are 50% new. Now the engine that it's based on is no slouch either. International Engine of the Year winner in 2016 and 2017. This has just won International Engine of the Year in 2018. This is much better. Jesus, what the way it picks up speed. The levels of grip, the power, the brakes. It is addictive. Full power on the brakes. goes light up the crest. Jesus, the speed is so accessible. Brakes are so strong. I'm not even trying to see off because I'm having so much fun in sport. Run it wide, carry the speed. We hit the limiter there. Break. Woo! And that's my cue. Box and slow. What a machine. What an absolutely addictive speed demon machine. Oh my dear Lord. That was everything that you could possibly hope it to be and more. Unbelievable. I feel like Vettel at the end of one of his Grand Prix victories. Grazie mille. Grazie ragazzi. Molto bene. And now for my absolute ultimate Ferrari fanboy moment. I have to do it. Forza Ferrari.